Hey you guys, Gamekeeper John here today. We're having a little mooch. We're walking around the woods, we might look for some forks, might have a couple of shots, give you a few tips and pointers along the way. Stuff we do, little tips and that. Mainly what we're going to be showing you is how to avoid fork hits on catapults. Everybody gets them, some people not so much, some have had them, some don't. Some have sorted their own way out not to get them, but some people do still get them. So for the course of this mooch in this video, we'll give you all the little tips. We've got about 10 or 12 little tips to eliminate fork hits from your shooting. But for now, Let's mooch and see what's about. Can you see the mini ash fork? Well, here's a good tip for you. Often see loads and loads of mini ash forks like this while out on the travels. What you normally see me do is wait till they're fully sized. They normally grow out like that, so you have to steam them and pull them in. Once they're this size, once they're mini, you can literally bend them in all different directions. So what we're going to do now is cable tie this up and leave it until it's fully grown. It will naturally grow in this position. What we're going to do is whip a cable tie around it, and then I'm going to pull that there now, and that will naturally grow in that position. With a cable tie on, as it is now, that natural fork there will grow in that position. It won't need steaming, in fact it won't need nothing doing to it apart from drying out. I come along this walk often, there's loads of little ash forks and little sycamore forks like that, so we'll get them all cable tied in now, then in a month or so's time when we do this walk again, they'll all be there ready to harvest, growing in the perfect U cup that we Absolute want. Absolute beauty here, it's a bit bigger than mini, but we'll leave it for another few weeks or so. And you see the U cup in there? It's almost growing in the perfect shape. I often get asked what camera I use, and I use the Canon Legeria. I use it for two reasons. One, it's pocketable, and two, it is extremely good quality. As I'll zoom in on this now, show you exactly what I mean. We are standing about 25 meter away from that catapult. And you can see, I'm gonna zoom all the way in and get an absolutely, what should be, crystal picture. That is filmed from around 20 meters away and it's like it's held in front of the camera look at that little beauty look at the cup on that cable tie on and the cup exactly how we want it i really can't wait to come back on this walk it's going to be a good harvest we've tied probably seven or eight perfect little cups like this up now they're all roughly the same size i'd say three or four weeks they'll be ready because they're not exactly really small they're, you know they're shootable now We'll just let them chunk up a bit, grow naturally. And we have another one there, which we're going to climb up and tie in position now. Actually, there's two there. Can you see them both in clip? One on the right, one on the left. Let's get them tied in. Well, that was a productive little walk, that. This path down here, we've probably walked about, I don't know, 150, 200 metres. We've only been walking for five minutes. We've tied in, as a guess now, at least 10 of them little ash forks. They're all around the same size, probably, 10 mil diameter they're all tied in now to the perfect u cup uh, i'll do this walk off and i've kept my eye on these since they've been literally two mil little things now they're big enough now to pull in and cable tie uh, and i really can't wait to get back down here and harvest them right we're going to head up to the top of the hill now have a couple of shops uh, shops have a couple of shots <laughs> not shops i wish there was a shop up there i could have a nice cold can of beer or a big jam donut or something but like I say we're gonna have a walk up there maybe have a shot at something and we'll show you how to get rid of four kids from your shooting. Let's see if we can take this coin out moving. Hopefully not side on. It's all about the PPMG. Uh, I doubt I'm going to find the coin to see where we hit it, but it's definitely a hit. You could hear it. Uh, yeah, PPMG strikes again. Uh, like to say, everybody who come to the UK say Sheffield shoot on Saturday, what a good event that was. Uh, there's in between, I don't know, 1,800 shooters on the day. Uh, Jumbo was the one that stood out for me, absolutely on fire. Uh, I was lucky to come second against him in the 10 metre. I'm happy with my second place in the 10 metre. The way Jumbo was shooting, nobody could touch him. Well, I'm happy with my second. Uh, there's loads of UK shooters going over to the 
Italy World Championships this month. I wish them all the very best of luck, regardless of what team you're on or where you're from. If you're from the UK, I'm cheering from you. What we're going to do now is tell you how to eliminate forkets from your shooting. Now, there are many reasons why you can fork it a frame. I've actually got a couple on mine, you know. We all get them from time to time, it happens. We're going to go through some of the reasons now. One of the main reasons that I honestly believe to fork it is pouch release. So if we come over here now and draw back, we'll have to do it from over this side. You see the pouch? If you keep it smooth like that, it will fly straight. If you tend to do that with a pouch, when you let go, the ball will bump over your finger and go up. And vice versa, if you're pulling back like that and doing it that way, it'll bump down and go down. So I do think you can cause a little bit of a shooting bump like that which will flick the ball up or down which will then when it comes up obviously if it flicks up it's going there if it flicks down it's going there i believe pouch release to be one of the main reasons if not the main reason why people get forkets don't get me wrong there are many many others which we're going to talk through now but pouch release i honestly believe is the main reason if it's all smooth and the pouch is flat then the ball should go straight through the middle like so. Another one is people tilting the frame either forward too much or back too much. This causes the gap to smaller and get smaller. So if you look at that now, if you're looking at that gap in the forks, as soon as I start turning, see so the gap getting smaller? If I was shooting it like that, there's a chance I'd fork it the inside of that fork. If I was shooting it like that, there's a chance I'd fork it the inside of that fork. So keeping the pouch, not the pouch, sorry, keeping the catapult, like sort of like that it's a 90 degree or you know you, there's a bit of movement in it but as long as it's near as that too will help you avoid forkets also cutting the bands at different lengths as you can see i spend a lot of time cutting my bands marking up before i put them on but if one band was say like that longer than the other then when you draw back the shorter band is going to retract faster bringing that round and then pushing the ball up so something silly, like making sure that your bands are the same length, could also eliminate four kits that you may be getting. With bands as well, what I've done a couple of times, mainly rushing, shooting at night, and that, is sometimes I've pulled it back and the bands haven't even been round the fork, they've been sort of like that. See that? And I've had it wrong, and that causes a fork kit. That normally comes with rushing, but when you're rushing, that, all sorts of things can happen then, you might release the pouch different, you might tilt the frame quick in a rush, in a rush, sorry. So rushing is a big no-no. Rushing is where I get most of my fork. It's normally, if there's a piece of game I want to shoot, I get all excited, uh, dink, and off she goes. But yeah, rushing is also another main factor for fork hits. Dropping the fork after the shot. This is arguably a reason or not, but if you are getting fork hits and you've tried many of the other reasons, try it. A lot of people, me included, tend to be lazy sometimes I shoot and then my hand drops straight away now if you shoot on release you can drop it into the ball so if you notice most of my four kits are all around that area and I believe I used to do a lot of I wouldn't call it lazy shooting but I would shoot and then my hand would drop now what I tend to do more is shoot and follow the shot through try not to drop your hand after every shot as soon as you release like this that could eliminate four kits as well. If you're getting them, there's loads and loads and loads of different reasons. We're still going to carry on going through them. But try them all, because if you're getting four kits, it is almost certainly going to be one of these reasons that we mentioned now. Centering the ammo. Most pouches these days have a centre ammo all. I don't know many people who don't use one. This goes back to the theory on pouch release a little bit, to be honest. But getting the ball dead centre. So if the ball's not centre and it's there, effectively, what you are doing is making one band longer than the other. We've already covered that, which will make the ball fly up or down, depending on which band is longer than the other. Another one, which is probably obvious, sometimes just having forks too narrow might not suit you, and you might have to switch your frame, get something a little bit more wider. I used to shoot the PPSG, and I was constantly dinking it, because the gap in the PPSG sort of filled around that little area as well there. PPMG, I've almost eliminated them. The couple on here are most likely, you know, shooting with the opposite hand, laziness, dropping shots. I haven't had a fork it now. Touch wood. Well, I haven't had one this year, probably from the middle of last year. Uh, but it's normally rushing with the opposite hand out the car window, crack, trying to get something. So, uh, yeah, sometimes it could just be that you need a wider fork. Try it. So, with all them reasons there, if you're still getting fork hits and you've tried all that, I'm not too sure what else to say if you think there's another reason why you get four kits 
feel free to drop it in the comments. We'd love to know your reasons or methods why you think you're getting them. Uh, we can all help each other on this post. And if there's anything I've missed, comment. People can read it. We can all help each other. Absolutely brilliant. Um, another thing about shoots, people keep asking me about all the shoots. There are a couple of shoots coming up in the summer. I will be at both. There is a BCA, British Catapult Association, one in Solihull, down Birmingham way. It will be sometime in the summer. As soon as dates are out, you'll see it on my channel and everything as well. And there's my favourite, the big one, Andover, which will be in August, which is down Hampshire way, down by Stonehenge. I normally have like eight or nine events there. You know, there's like 30, 40 trophies on. There's a pub on site. <laughs> hey, get on it. <laughs> uh, all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so there's no dates confirmed yet. There's no venues confirmed. But what I can confirm is there definitely will be one in Solihull and there definitely will be one in Andover. Next mooch we do, because every time we got something to show you or do now, we turn it in to a little mooch video because I've realized that you all like the mooches. Next mooch is the GZK review. He sent me a big sized parcel down, different size elastics, colors, thicknesses, pouches, new pouches with the rubber grips, uh, his material targets, uh, whipping stuff. He sent me a parcel down. We're gonna go out for a mooch and uh, review it. Obviously, I've been shooting it, I've been trying it, but I won't review it until I've been shooting it a lot because so many people get a new elastic, put it on, ding, ding. Oh, I'll put a big review on when they haven't even tested the elastic. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that'll be the next one. But anyway, less of me rambling on because I've got stuff to do. We're going to have a mooch down the path down that way now. See what it's about. Uh, see if we can tie some more of them little ash forks in because we're going to have a few of them when we come round here next. And uh, that's it really. What happens, happens. The camera's coming with me. Yeah. We have a 9.5 millimeter steel ball. See if we can have it. They don't come no cleaner than that. I heard the metal on metal dink from back there. And I bet that's the best spot of 20 meters, if not more. Happy days. Told you. It's all about the PPMG. Right then, let's try a coin out the air. Might be hard to see, but I'm sure you'll hear it if I get it. Whoa, that went shooting off then. I bet it's gone 20, 30 meters that way. Uh, I hope the camera picked it up. It's a good camera, so it should have done. If not, I'm almost certainly that you'd have heard the dink. Right then, definitely time to head off now. Because she's going to kill me if I ain't back for tea. So I'm going to start heading home.